Patient observations day three. Less thrashing, some response to stimulus. Vital seems solid. Two attempts so far by locals to break into the chantry to kill my patient. All this work to save her life and will they just execute her? We'll inform Lady Cassandra. I expect her to wake there before the morn. Construction orders. As you know from the terrible accidents of last week, many passages through the mountain are unstable and liable to collapse at any moment. Do not wish for us to lose more brothers and sisters in the search for lost cultist treasure. We must seal all entrances into the mountain. The Templars have done a careful sweep of the caves. Everything of worth was collected. What remains of the disciples of Andraste will be forgotten, buried in the earth. Once it is done, let us have no more talk of them. This is the new haven, restored to life by the true Chantry, the most holy Justina V, Mother Florentine. Siege equipment in Thetis. Siege weaponry has been used in Thetis for centuries, with primitive equipment used as far back as the Third Blight. Nevertheless, it occupies a peculiar niche in the tools of warfare due to its requirements. Any army wishing to produce trebuchets or cab catapults must be funded and organized well enough to procure both the necessary materials and the military expertise to construct them. Throughout history, most armies who fulfilled such requirements did not take advantage of the, situ of the situation. During the Third Blight, for example, Alesians and one to Simid constructed catapults to fling flaming debris at the Darkspawn, but the expense of the weapons did not justify the limited damage they caused, and the Darkspawn were ultimately driven back by the Grave Wardens, not siege weaponry. To vent their forces similarly, similarly had the resources to construct siege weapons when attacking the free mar marches or defending themselves against the exalted marches of the Black Eight. Instead, the Emperor focused primarily upon the power of its magisters, who were less powerful but more flexible than siege equipment, and who could more easily fall back when the tide of the battle turned. As a result, in the battles against the Quinari in the Steel Age, generals found their, to their chagrin that the great oxmen had left them behind. Quinari back, black powder is, most military experts agree, not magic. It is merely an advanced alchemy that makes their cannons more effective than any trebuchet could ever be. Nevertheless, there remains hope. As centuries have passed since the last blight, the mages are now safely held in the circles where they harm no one. The experts of the Feldrin and Orlus may once again turn their great minds to learning. We need no magic. Not where the minds of men survive, unfettered with our resources and our equipment to, commitment to knowledge, we can easily surpass the brutal Quinari in the field of battle. From the Quin Gurus and Steel military conflict in the post blight that is written 929 Dragon, shortly before the start of the fifth blight. Josephine Montelet, Seeker Cassandra. Josephine Montelet is a noble from the nation of Antiva. She was dedicated, educated in the Val Royux, where she built connections among the court. Once she finished her schooling, at a surprisingly long young age, Lady Monolette became the official diplomat between King Philogino and Antiva, the Empress Selene of Aurelus. The appointment suits her. She is well-traveled, familiar with many forms of etiquette, and by all accounts, a skilled negotiator. It is... If that endorsement does not suffice, Josephine is a personal friend. I have faith in her. We require someone with both influential and trustworthy to be an ambassador for the Inquisition. You cannot tell me who you would prefer to take the job yourself, Sister Liliana. Liliana. She has many names. Most know her as Sister Liliana or the Night Nightingale. Some refuse to speak to her, speak her name at all, referring to only to her as the left hand of the divine, the shadow behind the sunburst throne. The spy master Marjolian trained Liliana from a young age. For years, Liliana was Marjolian's instrument in the great game of Aurelius. While Liliana was devoted to Marjolian, the reverse was not true. Marjolian betrayed Liliana and almost succeeded in killing her. Liliana survived the betrayal, thanks to revered mother Dorothea. 
Following this betrayal, Liliana spent several years in a closeter, cloister in Ferdinand, hiding from her past. Inspired by her revered mother, Dorothea, Liliana dedicated herself to her faith and faith, discovering peace and a simple life of devotion. But when the first fifth flight began, she received what she believed a vision from the Maker. This prompted her to leave her sanctuary, taking up arms against the Darkspawn. Several years after the defeat of the Archdemon, Liliana received a summons from Dorothea, now divine Justina V. She returned to Oth Orlis and became an agent of the Sunburst Throne. Justina perished in the explosion that destroyed the Divine Conclave and Liliana became a founding member of the S and spy master of the New Inquisition. The Pride Demon The most powerful demons yet to encountered are the Pride Demons, perhaps because they, among their Mo their kind most resemble men. As clever and, manip and manipulative as the desire demon, with a pinch of cruel irony that is almost human. While the demons of desire largely engage in bribery of mortals, pride will use mortals' own best nature against them. Clever men outwit themselves, strong men crush themselves, humble men forget themselves, jealous men fear themselves. They turn corruption and ruin into an art. From the beyond the veil, spirits and demons by the chanter Murdomel. Blood Lotus, do not try to get out of this. We were told you were the best. That is why you have been contracted. What is not you who was it not you who obtained the two hundred white blooming rose bushes for the Empress Winter Ball last year? The Comtes has been initially patient till now, but she doesn't understand why it is hard to fill the garden pool. She wants more, no more excuses, and no, she will not compromise with the dawn lotuses. They're white. The flowers have to match the silk canopies. It is crucial. Dark purple, dark red. Do not try to frame this as a safety issue. The guests will be perfectly safe. Why, if they experience any hallucinations from the concentration of lotus essence in, in the air, I'm certain I will only, it will only make the evening more thrilling. I don't care if you have to send someone to Fredolin Pete Bog to get it all, just do it. A note from Chamberlain Laurent to Grand Gardener Umbert Valakan over the decorations for the Comintis to Andrew's summer garden party. According to Gossip and Val, Roilux, the Chamberlain did succeed in convincing Grand Gardener Valakun Valklain to provide 420 lotus plants. The party was considered by most to be a roaring success, even though the evening concluded with, with at least 12 guests to sleep on the lawn, three in the pool, and one lady losing several teeth trying to take a bite out of a marble statue at the Comtes's, of the Comtes' father, which she was convinced was made of cake. Ripple Majors Whereas a circle was established not merely to protect the world from mages, but also allow mages to practice their, practice their art safely and without fear, and, whereas under Lord Seeker's Lambert's command, Templars sworn to protect all people, including mages, from the harmful effects of magic, have instead persecuted mages with such biased judgment as to worsen the problems they were meant to imagine, and, whereas the right to tranquility intended as a tool of res large resort to stop uncontrolled mages from hurting themselves or others, as instead has instead been used for punitive and political purposes to silence dissent and inhi inhibit civilized discourse, and whereas Andrastate herself intended the relationship between the mage and the Templar to be one of the practitioner and protector, not in prisoner and jailer, not prisoner and jailer, and this contract has been broken leaving mages to fear for their lives from those sworn to protect them. Now, therefore, the Circle of the Magi declares the following. We, the mages of Ferdinand and Orlas, do hereby dissolve the circles and renounce our sworn submission to the Order of the Templars, effective immediately. We reiterate Andrastate's assertion that magic was made to serve man, not rule over him, and state unequivocally that we will use our abilities we need to defend ourselves from those who would see us relinquish our lives and freedoms under the presumption of guilt for crimes we have not committed. We condemn those practitioners of magic who, through illness of mind or 
understandable but misguided anger at those who oppressed them, would use their magic given powers to threaten innocent lives, and we pledge to aid any legitimate and impartial government in bringing these lawless apostates to justice. We look earnestly to, fu to a future of cooperation between all people of Thetis, free from persecution and prejudice, and hope to build a better world alongside all who approach us with friendship instead of fear. Yours in, yours in service to Unjustate and the Maker, the Free Mages of Thetis, a leaflet distributed in towns and villages across the Aulus and Ferlidillon. The Templar Order, end of an accord. Most holy, the Seekers are well, aware of the part you played in the rebellion. You call me the Grand Cathedral in the middle of the night, on urgent business only to speak of trivial matters, and then, when I return to the White Spire, I discover chaos, and one of your agents in the midst of the apostates. Did you think I did not notice? Do you believe yourself above persecutions for such acts? It was a dark day when the Chantry placed such an capable woman upon the Sunburst throne. I will stand. I will not stand idle and watch you destroy what ages of tradition and righteousness have built. And the twelfth year of the Divine Age, the Nev Neverin Accord was signed. The Seekers of the Truth load our banner and agree to serve as the Chantry's right hand, and together we created the Circle of the Magi. With the Circle no more, I hereby declare the Accord null and void. Neither the Seekers or the Truth nor the Templar Order recognize Chantry authority, and instead we will perform the Maker's work as it was meant to be done, as we see fit. Signed this day on the fourth, 40th year of the Dragon Age, Lord Seeker Lambert Van Rees, that is sent to Divine Justina from former Lord Seeker. Templar Order, traditional role. Often betrays a stoic and grim, the Order of the Templars was created as a martial arm of the Chantry, armed with the ability to dispel and resist magic in addition to their formidable combat talents. Templars are uniquely qualified to act as both a foil for apostates, mages who refuse to submit to the authority of the circle, and the first line of defense against the dark powers of the blood mages and abominations. While mages often resent the Templars as symbols of the Chantry's control over the magic, the people of Thetis see them as saviors and holy warriors, champions of all that is good, armed with piety enough to protect the world from the ravages of the foul magic. In reality, the Chantry's militant arm looks first for skilled warriors with unshakable faith in the Maker, with the fullest moral center as a secondary concern. Templars must carry out their duty with an emotional distance, and the order the Templars prefer soldiers with a religious fervor and absolute loyalty over the paragons of virtue who might question orders when comes time to make difficult choices. The Templars power devours from the substance Lurium, a mineral believed to be the raw element of creation. While mages use lyrium in their arcane spells and rituals, Templars ingest the primordial mi mineral to enhance their abilities to resist and dispel magic. Lyrium use, lyrium use is regulated by the Chantry, but some Templars suffer from lyrium addiction, the effects of which include paranoia, obsession, and dementia. Templars knowingly submit themselves to this treatment in the service of the Order and the Maker. It is this sense of ruthless piety that most frightens mages when they draw their, the Templars' attention. When the Templars are set, sent to eliminate a possible blood mage, there is no reasoning with them, and if the Templars are prepared, the mage's magic is all but useless. Driven by their faith, and, driven by their faith the Templars are one of the most feared and respected forces in Thetis. From patterns within form of formed by Halden First, encounter the Stark Haven, 880 Blessed.